Okay, Resetters, Dr. Mindy here for our Thursday Q&A. And um, gosh, I have a lot of thoughts for you today. I have been on this continual quest of uh, weeding through the research on fasting and hormones. So if you, and this applies to both sexes, so this is really an issue for both men and women. I um, make sure that you're following the different videos I'm doing over the next couple weeks because I'm breaking down each hormone and going through how fasting affects each one of these hormones. Tomorrow, I'm putting out a video on adrenals. So this is something that we see a lot that comes up where people think they can't fast because they have adrenal fatigue. So there is nothing further from the truth and there's a, a, a specific style of fasting that you will benefit from if you have adrenal fatigue. There is an approach to fasting you need to implement if you have adrenal fatigue and you can use fasting to heal your adrenals if you do it right. So that video will come out tomorrow morning uh, so you all can watch that. I, I'm not sure if you guys are aware of this, but we premiere my videos on Tuesday and Friday morning at 6.30 Pacific time. And it's super fun because there's a bunch of you guys there uh, watching. Thank you for joining those, the premiere. My team is there to answer questions. So um, if you wanna feel connected to the community, if you want uh, to connect with my team, they're there premiering those videos. So make sure you, you, um, if you, if you hit the notification button on YouTube, on my channel, you'll get notified when that happens. So, um, okay, the fasting Q&A. So I have a new strategy for this because I wanna be able to answer your guys' questions. So on Thursday mornings, we will put in the community page an announcement about what time I'll be going live. It's usually around this time. And then if you have a fasting question, put it in that thread underneath the, uh, the announcement of the live. I will answer those questions first. So make sure if you have a question for me um, that it goes there and we'll start with those questions. Otherwise, when you hop on the live, ask your question and we will do our best to weed through um, and answer them. I'm usually on anywhere from a half hour to 45 minutes. Um, and again, I, I, my vision for the world is that every human on the planet starts to understand how fasting can heal them. I love fasting for so many reasons, but perhaps the biggest thing is that it's free. So every human on the planet can do it and it will heal every human on the planet. So with that being said, I wanna make sure that you guys are not getting frustrated with your fasting, you're understanding the principles of fasting, you're getting the science behind it. So on Thursdays, I'm gonna do my best to answer your questions. If I don't get to your question, join us in our academy or join us through one of our resets. That This is where we can interact on a Zoom call um, together as a community and you can have a, an ability to take what you're learning here to a deeper level. So with that, I'm not, I'm not gonna talk much. I'm gonna dive into questions uh, if people have questions. If not, I'll, I'll keep lecturing. Okay, well, we have some uh, people in the chat that have questions. Okay, but great. We didn't have any in the community. Page, okay, great. But those would be where we go first. Awesome. But I'm also gonna take some questions from our inside our Reset Academy group about this post. So okay. uh, we have um, Chris, and Chris wants to know about a feast day. So this is sort of relating to fasting and feasting and uh, in our academy. And curious about- uh, Feast day is the question. Yeah, curious about rice and grains on a feast day. Okay, so let's, let's make this applicable to everybody. Uh, the question is feast days. Can you have rice on a feast day? So again, I wanna teach you how to live this feast famine cycling that I talk so much about. So I wanna give you the concept and then I'll answer the question. So you'll see this tomorrow in the video that comes out on adrenals. Our bodies were meant to have a little bit of stress put on them, just a tiny bit. It's a, it's a, a scientific term called a hormetic effect. And a hormetic effect is when you put a little bit of stress on your mitochondria, on your cells, on your organs, the, you, that organ will heal. A lot of stress, no. 
So there's a new term coming up called intermittent living, and I love this term. And the idea is that when we do intermittent fasting on a regular basis, when we go into a breathing technique known as intermittent hypoxia, um, when we look at uh, the cold showers that everybody's doing, so intermittent temperature changes, whenever we go into these moments of extreme um, discomfort for some of us, the body adapts. So if, but we're not meant to stay there forever. And I really want to emphasize this because with fasting, what happens is people get so passionate about their results that they do more and more and more and more fasting. That's not, now you've, you've gone beyond hormetic effect. Hormetic effect is small, they call it biphasic, where there's small doses of stress that make you stronger. But if you're under a long bit of stress with too much fasting, it will weaken you and actually build chronic disease. So the feast day is really important. But to me, a feast day is not a day where you just eat whatever you want. You could. I like to choose my feast days wisely. And I have three types of feast days. I've done videos on it here on my channel. The question that Chris asked is, could I use rice on my feast day? So yes, rice will help build the hormone progesterone, but not white rice. White rice is like white bread. There's nothing there for you. Um, the brown rice, that, okay, now that's progesterone building, but one of the challenges we have with brown rice is that it has been um, over and over again proven to have high levels of arsenic in it. So I used to do a ton of brown rice, and then when I understood heavy metal, to heavy metal toxicity, I was like, no, I'm not gonna do brown rice. So the next best thing is wild rice. Wild rice will raise progesterone. It's great on a feast day. It's just a different experience than white rice, right? So it is a much crunchier version. So what I do with my patients is I'll have them move from white rice to wild rice by having them gently go to brown rice and mix it with the wild rice. So there's a mixture and then over time, less and less brown rice. And yes, rice is really, really good for protein building. So, and it's great on a feast day. Okay, great. Um, so we have some, I'll go into the YouTube chat okay. now. Uh, we've got a lot of people on, so thanks everybody. We'd love to know where you're from. In yeah, the let us know where you're from and let us know your favorite fast. Um, I would, I, I love knowing what everybody's doing. Uh, it also helps me customize my videos for you guys. Great. Anita had a question about adrenal fasting for adrenal fatigue. Oh, yeah, okay. So Anita wants to know about fasting for adrenal fatigue. Tomorrow, I dive into that. So please watch the video tomorrow. And one of the things you'll see this on my video on Tuesday, or the one I put out a couple days ago about oxytocin, is I like to give you the philosophy of like adrenals. So you're gonna see that I'm gonna teach you tomorrow that adrenals is so much more than just the adrenal gland. There are more organs involved that you've gotta think about. Then I show you the science, and then I show you how you apply fasting to it. So stay all the way through that video. And to answer your question, what I want you to know, Anita, is that yes, if you have adrenal fatigue, fasting is phenomenal, but I would not have you jump into a three-day water fast. Um, I will tell you what I've done when I've personally coached people with adrenal fatigue is we usually start by just pushing your breakfast back an hour and then we get you comfortable there. And then let's say that's 11 hours. Once you're comfortable there, after a couple of weeks, we'll push it a little more. This is how we use hormetic effect to our, to our advantage, is we're just putting a little bit of stress on those adrenals, just and raising cortisol, asking your adrenals to raise cortisol just a little bit. And that forces the adrenals to adapt. So the answer is absolutely you can fast if you have adrenal fatigue and I want you to understand the process behind it. But start with just slowly pushing your, wind, your uh, fasting or your eating window back. And um, in the video, I talk about foods that you should be eating when you do eat that will help the adrenals. So um, I put all my little tips and tricks in that one. Great. Um, this is uh, from Jessica Hernandez. Okay. Uh, she wants to know how do you 
provide keto and carbs up. I think it's probably related to women cycling uh, and hormone building. Okay, so Jessica wants to know about keto, carbs, yeah. and hormones. And hormones. Okay. So let me, let me just say, the, Jessica, the basic premise here around hormones, keto, and, and, and women. Um, we do really well with keto from day one to about day 21 of our cycle. This is just sort of a general statement. There's a few nuances in there, but this is the, the big statement. So you can do keto, low carbs, totally fine during that time. Once we hit day 21, this is where our, we need progesterone. If you still have a cycle, we need progesterone to be able to shed the inner lining of the uterus. What happens to a lot of women when they come to keto and fasting is they, don't, they just keep going straight through and they don't do the week, they don't look at the week before. So um, they end up throwing their hormones off, they lose their period, they start spotting, they have more anxiety. They, I mean, they throw everything out of whack. If they're a perimenopausal woman or a menopausal woman, that's even worse. And I, I only know this from experience. This is what I did when I first came to fasting and it just made my menopause symptoms just, it was like somebody put gasoline on a fire. So from day 21 until you're, that you have your cycle again, you need to step out of ketosis. So to answer your question, we want you to up foods that will raise progesterone and we are not looking to keep you in ketosis during that week. So I know this is scary for people who want to lose weight, but that you're not trying, you're trying to go into hormone building foods. These are rice, squashes, beans, citrus fruit, tropical fruit. Those are not foods that typically will keep you in ketosis. Now you can intermittent fast, that's fine. And I will tell you a little side note, but I haven't proven this yet. We actually have one of our employees that we're testing it on. I, we're looking at carnivore fasting as because grass-fed beef can really raise progesterone. So I know one of the concerns is if you go a whole week out of ketosis, you're gonna gain weight. So we're looking if you eat meat as a carnivore fasting potentially being a hormone building um, experience. I have a, one of my team members right now that is doing carnivore fasting um, and she's doing it. I think we started off at a month and she's loving it so much she's gonna continue and then we're gonna check her hormones. We have a pre-test and then we'll check her hormones and see if it improved it or didn't. So stay tuned uh, for that experiment. But the general blanket answer is that we're not trying to keep you in ketosis the week before your cycle. Now, if you're a postmenopausal woman, then you can fast whenever, you can stay in ketosis as long as you want. If you have symptoms of progesterone depletion, anxiety, insomnia, um, hot flashes still, a lot of postmenopausal women still have hot flashes, then you're gonna need to sprinkle in weekly, at least one day a week, these hormone building fits. So. Okay. And I, did, I think I, I mentioned this all on those videos around women and um, I did a video on why women should fast and then how women should fast. I mentioned that on there. Great. Uh, Bobby, uh, this is an interesting question because hopefully we won't unlock too much complexity. Okay. Uh, herpes mouth sores break out after a few days of fasting. Oh, interesting. Okay, so viruses. Bobby, um, a, a girl, boy, man, woman, we don't know. Okay, so Bobby, um, break out in, in canker sores or uh, herpes virus from fasting. So remember that fasting stimulates autophagy and autophagy really got to be, a, um, got to be known as a detox, like a self detox. But that's sort of a simplistic way to explain it. What autophagy does, if you go 17 hours or longer, is it turns on an internal self-repair mechanism inside that cell. And that self-repair mechanism starts to clean up the inside of the cell. So anything that's injured inside that cell, mitochondria, nucleus, uh, uh, endoplastic reticulum, like there's a lot going on, membranes, there's a lot going on inside that cell, will be repaired, which is phenomenal. But also, what the, what the cell will do is if it identifies a pathogen, a virus or a bacteria, is that it will work to kill it or push it out. So my guess is that's what's happening to you. I don't know your whole health history, but that virus is now getting pushed out of the cell, 
We see this with heavy metals a lot. As autophagy kicks in, the inner intelligence kicks out all the heavy metals and people start losing their hair. And that's an, or, or some of you gain weight because that, those metals have to be redistributed. So there's a couple things you can do. Again, I don't know your health history, so I'm just gonna throw out some ideas. Um, bind, we really like bind. It's an activated charcoal. If people have obscure fasting symptoms, you can go to Rev Health. My team can put in some links to Revelation Health or you can go to revelationhealth.com. If you put my last name in, they'll give you a discount and get bind. So every time you go into a longer fast, make sure you're taking bind on a regular basis. The other one you can use is a product called VIVI -VI, uh, and that you can find on Revelation Health as well. But you wanna be aware that, oh my gosh, fasting creates this viral reaction, so what do I do so that I can now grab onto that virus and get it out? And that's what BIND and VIVI VI will do. So let me know if that is helpful. Okay, um, this is from T. Kerinsky. Okay. What is the best convenience food for breaking a fast? What is the best convenience food? I it love. Depends on where you are. Yeah, no, world, I, I love yeah. that. Okay, let's talk about. That's a great. I love the way you phrase that convenience food because that's what we're trying to do, right? Is make fasting convenient. So I love it. Okay, so let's talk about breaking a fast. Um, the first thing I would say is I like to break my fast with fat, just because it doesn't make me go into this overeating place. Fat um, will suppress the hunger hormone really important so if you hit that 17 hour mark and you're like oh my god i'm so hungry i can barely take it and you break it with fat then you're at you end up um oftentimes not rebounding so i like to break it especially the shorter fast with fat uh so avocado that's pretty convenient grab one in the morning take it off to work um, i don't know what part of the world you are but you know they have those little nut butter packets that you can that you can squirt in your mouth um, I, we get those at our gro local grocery store um, we, keto mana if you don't know about keto mana um, that also is a uh, you can go to dr mindy's favorites on my web page and i have a keto mana um, link there that would be helpful now the other things, if we're staying in the convenient lane, if it's a shorter fast, I did this just yesterday, um, I'll break my fast with uh, the beef sticks, Paleo Valley beef sticks. So um, again, those are on Dr. Mindy's favorites on my, my website. So um, that was really convenient. I mean, I was on interviews all day and then I got off at like four o'clock and um, we're doing carnivore fasting in the uh, fat burner reset. And so I had a whole stack of beef sticks. I just opened those suckers up and ate them. So I think fat or like a protein like that is fabulous for the shorter fast. For the longer fast, you have to be a lot more strategic and they're not as convenient. So the longer fast, you gotta break them with broth and break them with some probiotic food so that we can repopulate the um, good bacteria. And I've, I've done some videos on that. So I, th I feel like um, one of the things in researching uh, cortisol that really hit me is that when we go into a fasted state, there is a natural, especially the shorter fast, there's gonna be a natural increase in cortisol. It's a stressor on the body, a hormetic effect. So it will create a, a cortisol re response. Where we get in trouble with cortisol is when insulin is high. So in a fasted state, when cortisol goes up, you are actually in a repair version of cortisol. Cortisol gets a horrible bad rap. So, but in this small dose, you're in this hormetic effect. If you break your fast with a high carb diet, like a ton of fruit, or um, maybe a bread or pasta, and you come in with a carb-centric um, uh, meal, now you've got insulin high and you've got cortisol high, and that's more likely going to be stored as fat. So again, this is something that I unraveled today or this week as I put together the science for tomorrow's video. I think it's really important to realize what you break your fast with is super important because you've created this stress response that the puts the body in healing and you don't want to you don't want to challenge that too much so I would say the beef sticks the fat bombs I love things even like keto cups those kind of things there's a lot of little keto can keto mana again I don't know where you're located in the world but go to Dr. Mindy's favorites and um, 
it's, you'll see a lot of the little foods that I eat. I also do, um, but everybody told me that they don't, this isn't necessarily their jam. Um, I take a scoop of nut butter with some ghee and I put, it, um, I put it in my mouth to break a fast as I'm walking out the door to go somewhere. And um, I love that. My staff told me that uh, it was disgusting, so I offer it up to you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not eating it. <laughs> I've gotten more feedback on how gross the, the ghee is. I love it, so. Um, Different people like different Yeah, things. we all have different taste buds. Yep. Right. Uh, Be Humble wants to know, um, can uh, fasting remove heavy metals, specifically ah. mercury, from the cell body? Okay, great. Uh, this is autophagy. Yeah, right. for starters, Be Humble, love your YouTube name, uh, wants to know if fasting will remove uh, mercury specifically from the inner part of the cell. The answer is no. Um, I wish it did. I, I would love to bring you guys all the incredible resources you could do that were completely free. One of the challenges we have with heavy metals is there's a, a really a very systematic way you gotta get heavy metals out of your body. We teach this in our Toxin Reset. But when you're fasting and you stimulate autophagy, you turn that intelligence on inside the cell. And that intelligence will often look around and find a heavy metal and say, this is no good. And it will either kill the cell or it'll push it out just like bacteria out into the bloodstream. And it gets heavy metals. The problem with heavy metals is they like fat and they like nervous tissue. So they'll go up to the brain and they'll start to, they'll settle into the brain. This is why one of the reasons we start to see people losing hair, we see hormones get thrown off with fasting. So a couple things you can do. Let's go back to the question around um, herpes virus. You can use bind. You can try a little bit of bind when you fast to see if that can, can grab onto the heavy metals. Um, it's a, the uh, bind is a weak, it's a weak binder for heavy metals. Um, you could try a little bit of cytodetox, but I wouldn't do too much. Both of those you can find on Revelation Health. I do a couple drops when you're fasting and see if that will bind to heavy metals. Um, and so, uh, yeah, those are kind of my easy steps for you. Um, if it keeps showing up, hair loss, weight gain, your, your hormones are getting more thrown off with fasting, that's redistribution of heavy metals. And that's where you got to learn a thorough detox. So. Okay, well, I'm jumping around here a little bit. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to go down the deep path on any specific issue, any okay. specific condition right now. But uh, this is a great, uh, this is for Maureen Haggerty. Okay. Uh, how, um, how often do you have to fast every day to get the benefits? So what kind of fasting cycle should you do? So Maureen wants to know if I want maximum benefits, how often should I fast? Essentially. Okay. Yes. It's a great question and it's a complicated question. So first thing I would say is just make sure you're fasting every day. Um, we recommend that everybody start with what we call a 5-1-1. Five, one, one. five days a week, you intermittent fast, 13 to 15 hours. One day a week, you push your fast to 24 hours and one day a week, you don't fast. That is the best protocol. Um, for just great maintenance that for new fasters, that is a phenomenal protocol. Now, there are some people that want to accelerate their healing. They want to accelerate their weight loss. So in that case, and I'm just going to spit out some different protocols I use here. In that case, I move people to a 4 two, one Four days a week, you do intermittent fasting. Two days a week, you do a longer fast, like 24 hours fast and one day a week you don't fast. So that would be the next level beyond a 511. And then the next level beyond that, if you're in a health crisis or you're like super stuck with weight loss is what we call a 331. Three days a week you do intermittent fasting, three days a week you do a 24 hour fast, and one day a week you actually go more than 24 hours and you do a 36 hour fast. I know that's a little more than seven days. That's like seven and a half days. But that kind of gives you an idea of the different steps you can take with fasting variation. And we teach this in our academy. So if you want more guidance on that, join us over there. And that's a really good like stepping stone so that you can kind of figure that out. Hope that helps. Okay, great. Um, oh, here's a good one. We haven't had this question before. And this may be controversial. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> Fasting for dogs. 
Oh, I love this question. Oh my gosh. Okay, fasting for dogs. I'm gonna tell you a little story. Um, we had the best dog ever. I've had tons of dogs. I'm a dog person. We've had tons of dogs in my life all, since I was a little kid. Uh, my husband, my family, and I had the best dog ever, Rottweiler, a lovely, lovely dog. And she got lymphoma and at about six years, seven years, and it broke our heart. And what I learned in that process is that I was feeding her twice a day. I was feeding her in the morning and in the evening, and I was feeding her grains. And at the time, I was like, I thought to myself when I started to look into what causes cancer in dogs, it's the same thing that causes cancer in humans. And it like hit me like, why would I be doing anything different with my dog than I do with my family or with myself? So we put her on uh, one meal a day and we put her on a total keto diet. Oh my God, she leaned out. She, her, her fur was so shiny, so beautiful. Like she turned into this magnificent dog and it elongated her life. Eventually we, we lost her. But from that experience, I finally decided, you know what? I'm gonna start fasting my dogs. If we go back to looking at how dogs are in the wild, they don't have, just like us, you know, it's like they don't have a bowl of something given to them in the morning. All animals fast. And animals fast when they're not feeling well, like part of an animal's life is fasting. So we now have two dogs and they are, are um, uh, one meal a day, that's all they get. And it's keto, grain-free meal. And yeah, that's that's how we do it. Um, I we worked with a holistic vet. Yeah, I was gonna say, I learned this from a holistic vet. So we are bringing that vet onto the Resetter podcast in a few weeks. So subscribe to the Resetter podcast and you'll see when, uh, and we're gonna talk about this exact thing. So my husband knew, I love this question because it was such a like aha for me. Like, why would I do anything different for my dog than I do for myself? And yeah, dogs need to fast too. So we even, to give you some idea, we've even had our, oh, my dog knows where, She's, I'm talking about her. She just rolled up right next to me. Um, the, we even, some nights, we'll, we'll let them go 24 hours. We'll not, we'll not feed them a day. And you know what's weird is it's like you and I, they, as you get them more metabolically flexible, they, they become, their, they don't care. You know, this dog that had lymphoma, we used to call her a foodie dog. She would grab everything off the countertop. She couldn't leave any plate down. And I realized that she was a sugar burner, and that was one of the reasons between that and her genetic profile that she got cancer. Well, our dogs that get one meal a day and are keto, they can easily go a day without food and they don't even haunt, bother us. Like, it's, it's really interesting. So yes, I love it. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, question for, about breastfeeding uh, and fasting. So it looks like they're like two years in. Breastfeeding uh, and, and fasting. Can't, can't lose weight, and so they're still breastfeeding. You want to talk about Yeah, okay, so um, my general rule with breastfeeding is, or general advice is intermittent fasting only, no longer fast. You don't want to stimulate autophagy. So autophagy comes in at 17 hours, and that's where your all the stuff we talked about today, things get pushed out of the cell and it'll go into breast milk and your child will get it. So that would be the first thing that I would say. Nothing longer than a 15 hour fast. Um, and for pregnancy, by the way, no fasting. So I just really wanna be clear on that. If you're struggling, you're two, in, two years into breastfeeding and you're struggling to lose weight, yeah, it's, that's a tough one because, um, gosh, I have a lot of mixed feelings on it. For starters, um, as women, especially when we're in our childbearing bearing ages, we're not meant to be stick thin. We're meant to carry a little more weight. That is part of um, the healthy way of carrying and delivering a baby. So I don't think per se that that is the time to lose weight. It's definitely not the time to detox. What it is the time to do is to focus on your microbiome, which also controls your blood sugar and can control if you can get into ketosis or not. So I, if, if I was breastfeeding right now, what I would be doing is intermittent fasting every day and doing a ketobiotic life. And ketobiotic is keeping your net carbs under 50 grams. 
uh, protein under 50 and eating over 60% of my food coming from fat and really focusing in on bi uh, probiotic foods like sauerkraut, kimchi, um, some of the probiotic yogurts. So really work on your microbiome and then do sort of a mild ketosis. And yeah, that would be the way I would approach it. Um, once you lose, once you breastfeed or done breastfeeding, the, it'll, you can do everything else I'm recommending here to lose weight. But we don't want a ton, when you lose weight, here's another weird thing to think about, and I don't know you, I wish I could have this personal conversation with you, is that when we start to drop a lot of weight, toxins, toxic estrogen lives in our fat. So when, that, when we lose weight and we burn that up, those toxins have to go somewhere and they're gonna go into breast milk, which is gonna go into your child. So one of my passions is really trying to help women see before they get pregnant what they can do to detoxify. But then once you get pregnant and once you're nursing, just good, wholesome food, intermittent fasting, those are, are sensible approaches. Building that microbiome, once you're stopped nursing in between children, now we can go back to more fasting and we can work on detoxing a little more. So hope that helps. Okay, we gotta get you to your other call. Okay, gotta, great. Uh, so, uh, okay, we're moving on to our fat burner call. So those of you that are in the fat burner reset will be on Zoom in a moment and stay tuned tomorrow morning for the adrenal uh, video. Let me know what you think of it. I, let me know if it's helpful. Uh, I, you will always find for me that I'm gonna give you the stem, steps I'm gonna give you the science, and I also want you to think the process through. So it's like the difference between giving you fish or teaching you to fish. So what I'm really trying to do here is get you guys thinking for yourself. So in tomorrow's video, you'll see that. I'm gonna explain adrenal fatigue, then I'm gonna show you the science, and then I'm gonna give you the steps. So as always, I hope that helps.